I'm Jamie and I'm going to read you one of my very, 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 very favorite books in the whole world called Dewey Bob. So I learned about this book when I was working. My friend Peter was reading it next to me to one of the clients that we worked with and I couldn't stop listening because everything he read, I just thought it was great. And finally I said to him, Peter, what book is that? And he told me what it was and I looked it up right away. And this copy that I have is a special copy because it's signed. I was so happy when I got this book. I did something that I haven't done since I was very little. When I was little, I used to take all the things that I was so happy to have and I used to tuck them under my pillow and sleep with them at night. And even though I was an adult, I was so happy to have this book <laughs> that I put it next to my bed at night when I slept and I read it before bed and I was super happy to see it when I woke up first thing in the morning. So I'm gonna read you this book that I love so much called Dewey Bob. And it's by Judy Schlechter. Dewey Bob Crockett was born in the pocket of an old pair of pants. And when he got too big for his britches, Dewey knew what he had to do. Time to find your own pair of pants, son, said Ma Crockett, wiping away a tear. And don't forget to take your buttons, she added handing him one for the road. True Dewey had never met a button he didn't like, but when his collection began to weigh down the family pants, Dewey knew it was time to move on. Do you see here somebody saying goodbye, Dewey? And he says, hello, button, because he's so excited to see another button. He loves buttons. He wasn't exactly sad about leaving because Dewey had mastered every raccoon rule there was in the book especially the one about washing stuff. Why, I'm as clean as the beans are green, declared Dewey every time he spun his little paws around a bar of soap. But finding a home that was big enough was harder than he had ever imagined because Dewey collected far more than just buttons. He collected experiences too. There's only so much a heart can hold, said Dewey, opening up an old glass jar before it began to overflow. That's one heck of a moon, said the raccoon with a sigh. And I'm gonna save me some. So he's opening up the jar to save the moon because he loves it so much. I wish I could save the moon in a jar. Dewey had just about given up finding a place when over yonder he spied a large pair of pants hanging on a clothesline. For a brief moment, Dewey was tempted to move right into the left leg and just call it a night that's when he saw it. No pants for me, no pants for me, cause I'm gonna live in a big oak tree, he sang, looking straight up at his future home. So he thought he was gonna live in that pair of pants, but then he saw an oak tree. That place was as empty as a hatched egg and filthy too, but a little dirt didn't scare Dewey. I'm a mean, clean washing machine, said the little raccoon as he scrubbed the place spotless. Then he took a long soak in the tub with some of his favorite buttons. And this says, perhaps a stripe would be nice. Sweet mother of marble, said Dewey looking around. This place needs some decorating. So Dewey dried off and went out to do a little shopping. The first stop was a row of trash cans. They were way too crowded for his liking. He's saying, keep it neat, fellas. And they said back, who do you think we are, Dewey, you? <sighs> Then he moseyed down to his favorite spot, the dump, where Dewey Bob fished from a mountain of lost and tossed things. Some folks' trash is another raccoon's treasure, and Dewey Bob Crockett will pick it all up for pleasure. You should see what's floating around in the ocean, Dewey. So he likes to go pick through the trash and find things that other people thought were trash, but that he thinks is a treasure. I like to do that too. When his cart was full, Dewey Bob pushed it over to a small stream and scrubbed his catch until it was as clean as a bucket full of bleached bones. Then he brought it all back home. Dewey worked day and night, separating his odds from his ends. Now this here has potential, he said, holding up an end. Ha, <laughs> that little rascal set to work doing what Dewey did best, making things. 
Some things were downright practical, while other things were what Dewey called art. Perfect buttons, shiny buttons, sitting in a jar. My favorite buttons are a secret, but you know who you are. This page opens up like this. Whoa. That's a whole pile of things that Dewey took for treasures. This is a real humdinger, declared Dewey Bob. I love looking at this page because you notice different things every time you look at it. Up at the top, there's a globe, right? And a watering can, an owl. What can you find? I'll hold it up a second so you can look for some things. But as he ran his tiny paws up and down and all around his new creation, he began to feel a case of the itchy twitchies creeping up his spine. That's a sure sign that a spell of collecting was coming on. So Dewey grabbed a clean glass jar, stepped outside of his tree, and collected the very first thing he saw. Fireflies! Dewey was partial to sparkly things, but he didn't have the heart to keep them. So isn't that nice? I like sparkly things too. But I never keep fireflies. Sometimes I'll let them land on my hand, but I always let them go because that's better for them. He said, tiny things with dark green wings and starlight in your tummies. Don't you miss your glowing homes and your sparkly mommies? Truth was, Dewey had begun to miss Ma Crockett back home in the family pants. And feeling a tad bit lonesome, the fella did something real unusual for a nocturnal creature. He went to bed. Do you know what nocturnal means? Nocturnal means it's a creature that's up at nighttime when we're sleeping, but they sleep during the day. But here they're saying Dewey did something really unusual and he went to sleep at nighttime. But before Dewey fell asleep, he needed to collect his thoughts. And the most important thought he tucked under his pillow. You see it here. The most important thought he had that night was, I need a friend. And he tucked it under his pillow. He was feeling a little lonely. The next morning, that little rascal was racing down a country road with his rusty old cart. He was tossing every critter too slow to get out of his way into it. And the birds are saying, he's nuts. Squeezy fleazy and don't ask me why, but collecting new friends is as easy as pie. Uh-oh. He thought that's how you collect new friends. He just rolled the cart down the street and threw everybody into the cart and thought, okay, they'll be my friend. I don't think that's how you do it. But Dewey soon found out that finding friends was much easier than keeping friends. Run for your lives, hollered a squirrel, launching a nut at Dewey's head. He's got crazy eyes, bleated an old goat, scrambling out of the cart. And he's out in broad daylight, howled a one-eared dog leaping into a bush. Every critter bolted. Oh, they all left. Stepped in for one, a barely breathing, half-starved mud ball. But mud ball or not, it seemed that Dewey Bob Crockett had collected his very first friend. And he was as proud as a panda wearing new plaid pants. And he's saying to the mud ball, I hope that's just your tummy growling. Collecting makes me hungry too, declared Dewey as he strolled out to the nearest trash can. Leftovers, leftovers, three days old, a biscuit and a chicken bone covered in mold. Polly put the kettle on, pretty please. Add the corn to the taters to the frozen peas. And he's asking the mud ball, pork chop? The mud ball was not impressed. Maybe the mud ball doesn't like pork chops. When even the smell of a moldy old pork chop failed to get a rise out of the critter, Dewey began to wonder if his new friend was really a critter at all. Maybe you is just an old ball of mud, he said. But then Dewey Bob leaned in and gave the thing a squeeze. Well, if that ain't a sweet puppy's purr. As soon as the two of them arrived back home, Dewey did what he always did with his collectibles. He gave that mud ball a good scrubbing. Squeaky clean as a baby string bean and as cute as a cloth covered button. 
Look at that. He scrubbed the mud ball and now it doesn't look like a mud ball at all. What does it look like? True Dewey could never tell the difference between a puppy and a kitten, but he always knew when something needed fixing. No wonder you didn't run like the mother critter, said Dewey, feeling his heart begin to break. You couldn't. Then he tucked his little friend into bed, tighter than a blossom in a buttonhole. That night, as the mud ball slept, Dewey Bob snuck into his workshop and took out two of his most prized possessions. And then he got straight to work. It ain't what you own that makes you happy, said the old gray mare to my great grandpappy. So he realized that the mud ball, which he's not sure if it's a puppy or a kitten, I think it kind of looks like a kitten. He went into his workshop and took two of his favorite things and he's gonna give them away to help his new friend. He's gonna make something with them. Come sun up, Dewey had made something as practical as it was pretty out of two big buttons and a handful of odds and ends. Mercy, he declared as he ran his paws up and down and all around his new creation. If those wheels ain't as round as the rings on a raccoon's tail. Then he waited for the mud ball to wake up. Well, it was no surprise that the little critter took to his wheels like a bear takes to bedroom slippers. He's saying, giddy up, puppy. You is the bestest thing I ever collected, mud ball. And he's saying, purr, because he's very happy. And even though it made Dewey dizzy to watch his little friend roll around the room all day long, he couldn't remember a time when he felt happier. Now everyone's talking to Dewey. See, so saying the squirrel saying, sorry about that, Dewey. That's so sweet. Amazing. Take it slow. They're saying all different things to Dewey because they saw what a good thing he did for his friend. But the truth is, the mud ball wasn't a thing. He was a living, breathing critter who deserved to experience the world in all of its splendor. And Dewey knew it. So first, he opened up his heart, and then he opened up the front door. Roll on, mud ball, roll on. And roll he did, right back into the arms of his very best friend. Give me a jar, mud ball. I need to collect me some of this. So as much as he loved the mud ball, he made him something so he could walk and he set him free and he told him he could go. But you know what? He loved Dewey too and he came right back and gave him a hug. Thank you for listening to me read my very favorite book called Dewey Bob. And I hope you learned some wonderful lessons from this book. And I think the best thing you could take away from it is if you see someone or something that needs help, do everything that you can to help them and set them free, right? Because at the end of the book, he says that the mud ball deserved to experience the world in all of its splendor. And I think that's true for everyone. So if you see people that maybe aren't having the best experience or they need some help, make sure you do what you can to help them just like Dewey Bob did.